A big hello to Miss O'Brien's Year 5 students from Ascom School in Sydney. I'm Glenn. I'm going to design with you today to create an automated vehicle for collecting soil samples on Mars. This is the Mars rover Perseverance. It's travelling 480 million kilometres from the Earth to Mars. It's one tough rover and we can learn a lot by having a closer look. One of its many jobs is to collect Martian soil and store it in its belly. Check out the NASA website in the link below. To find the starting point, first measure across 12 centimetres and then come up the page 8 centimetres. That's our starting point. Bring the splat down to your starting point and then from the little blip draw a line down and then around to the bottom. The vertical line, the little slot in the middle, and then two on the other side. Cool. Okay, bring your splat down until it's just at the top of that line and then trace in the two edges of the cube that we're drawing. Next we're going to rotate the splat upside down and we're going to line up the edge with that line, slide it up till it's at the top and then draw in the two far edges of the cube. Boom! Now we're stacking a second cube right behind. There's our starting point. We don't need to draw in all the lines because some are hidden. Just those two, and then step two, remember we slid it straight up and down and lined up that point. Just one line to draw there, and then we rotate the splat upside down. Watch as I complete the second cube. My lines are fairly firm. Remember they're only guidelines, so try to draw them as light as you can. The gaps in the corners I usually leave. I'll be rounding the corners off later anyway, but feel free to use a, a ruler and extend those if you want. I'm showing you three points on your drawing, and from those three points we're going to drop a two centimetre line straight down. And we'll also do one around the other side. Don't draw just yet. This tracing paper lets us look at a few different options. We could have hinged legs, in sandy soils, we could consider tracks. So if I sketch some wheels and then put some tracks over the top, maybe. I'm going to go with a large size wheel with a dot at the end of each of those lines and you splat straight up and down. We're using the right hand ellipse. Center that dot into the middle of the ellipse and then trace off the ellipse. Now we're going to slide it in this direction. So the trick is to put your pencil on that edge Hold it there while you slide it in that direction. Now how far? I'm going to slide it all the way to that mark. Keep going, stop. Now trace another ellipse. Use the splat angle to join the top of those two ellipses. Uh, basically we're drawing a cylinder. Next step we're going to make it hollow. But first let's erase a few of the lines that we're not going to see. And I may need to redraw some of those lines. Let's connect the wheel to the rover. I'm going to copy that line to give it some thickness. Watch as I draw the very front wheel in now. For the front leg, I'm going to go behind that line to add some thickness. The wheel on the other side starts the same, but there's one difference, watch this. Rather than sliding this way like we did before, we're going to slide the other direction. So we're sliding away from the rover when we draw that one in. Good, that's looking great. Here's the leg that holds the wheel on. I'm choosing to round off all of the corners on my cubes. Next we make the wheels look hollow and we do that by tracing a line right beside that wheel ellipse. Next guess the middle and put a dot. Now trace a really small ellipse on the dot and connect it with two lines. Next we're connecting the hub to the wheel using some spokes. I guess it's a really lightweight way of making uh, rover wheels. This is the simplest way to draw a four spoke design just with straight lines but they're actually um, sort of curved and that is so that they can flex when the wheel goes over bumps. And so we're drawing each of them as a little curve and behind the hub goes backwards and joins on. It's much trickier to try and draw a wheel with six spokes. Here it is front on and in 3D. But you could also make up your own design. Here's some wider spokes 
and in 3D they might look something like this. I'm going with a four spoke design but I'm curving them. Including some tread on the wheels will really help the wheels to grip into the sand and climb over rocks. Here's how I draw treads. Start off with some guidelines but then when it gets close to the edge of the wheel draw them a little bit closer together. That helps it look round. Now draw some zigzags on each of the guidelines. You'll find the earlier Rovers use this zigzag a lot, but the Perseverance wheels has more of a straight rib that's raised a little bit. You could come up with your own design, like um, some bumps. Just out of interest, the car tyres on Earth made out of rubber look like this, because we have really smooth roads. Back to the tracing paper, let's discuss a few ideas on how to pick up the soil. Well, I'm drawing a centre line for my first idea, and I'm using the blips on the small ellipse and lining those up with a centre line. I'm drawing half an ellipse at the top, but down the bottom, I'm drawing a full ellipse, and what I've done is draw a cylinder. So I'm connecting those with a splat. Can't quite make it all the way, but we'll fix that up later. Now inside this cylinder, it's hollow, is a screw thread. When it turns inside a cylinder, it's called an auger. Let me show you what's inside. I'll cut away some of this material. So that's like kind of the screw thread that turns and winds the soil from the ground all the way up into the body of the rover. Let's connect it there. Cool. Uh, here's another idea. Another centre line curved this time. Um, I'm starting the same way with the small ellipse lined up and I follow it down. And what I've done is a flexible hose, so I'm literally vacuuming up that Martian soil. All right, third idea. I'm tracing around that corner of the splat and I'm drawing on the left splat angle, I'm drawing three lines. I'm gonna repeat that L-shaped bit, except I'm going to start there. So you can guess that I'm drawing a scoop. I just need to connect those two points and the same there. And I've drawn a scoop. Let's connect it with a few lines to the rover. Great. I decided to add a joint halfway along that arm so that it can move and scoop. Now, how does the soil sample get inside the body of the rover? Well, I'm drawing some lines here. I'm pretty much using the splat angles. And it's kind of an opening, or you might even say a mouth. Here I'm dropping down the arm. Um, I'm drawing the scoop quite close to the rover. This is in the retracted um, position. So this is how it would travel before it lowers down the scoop. I'm adding some little fun details here. That could be a little black button sensor nose, perhaps. If I was using cameras for vision, then I might want to mount them up high on a mast. The shape that holds the um, two eye sensors is a rectangular prism and it can rotate left or right so it can get a panoramic view. Just like humans, having two eyes separated allows us to tell how far away an object is. The rover I'm designing, however, doesn't need to go far from the capsule to collect the samples, so I'm using two eyes in front. I wonder what sensors you'll use on your design. For instance, could they be flexible mountings? so that the eyes can flex down and see if there's a problem with the wheel, or you can have it flex down and check out the soil sample close up. I'm marking the position of my eye or camera with a dot, and to make sure it's level, I'm using the left splat angle to take a guideline across and put a second mark. Tilt the splat over the small ellipse till it's on this angle. Now center it on your eye or camera and draw it in. Next, draw a big and a small circle, like an eye reflection, and then darken in around them. I'm drawing two triangular pyramids on top, and they are the sound sensors. My rover is designed to respond to um, voice commands from humans as well. Maybe the other job of the rover is to be a companion robot to the astronauts. I'm designing a band that goes around the rover, and that is in case it needs to be lifted up and down. So I'm holding the splat in that position because it's easy to draw those two lines. Now I'm sliding it forwards a little bit and drawing a second line. I'm rounding the corners off before I darken it in. 
and the same thing on top. What about on the journey to Mars? It may be that you wouldn't want the rover floating around inside the capsule. You might need a tether point. And that's why I've drawn on this collar. Let's think of an energy supply for our rover. We could use solar. That means we'll need to have a solar panel. I'm going to extend that line out by half a splat length and then join those two together. So I've got like a triangle shape. Let's do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to need to extend on that left splat angle. So extend that line out half a splat. And then join to form a triangle. Your solar panel could be any shape. Solar panels often have these lines going across them. And I'm going to use two little terminals there, positive and negative, to supply the electricity. Another option may be to run your rover using a battery or even a fuel cell that produces its own electricity. Here's how to draw your hatch in the open position so it can swing down like that so that you can get into the fuel cell or maybe to charge the battery. So we'd need a lead. What about if, you, uh, if your rover had its own lead? It could look like a little tail at the back perhaps. I think I'll draw that concept up. So here's a center line and on the center line I'll draw a series of little cylinders. Charging lead. Cute. Here's a different way to attach the wheels to the body. It provides some suspension. Choose where you'd like the horizon to run behind your rover and then draw any shaped horizon. I'm breaking the horizon and I'm running a deep valley towards you. And in the background, we have a massive um, mountain there, the biggest in the solar system. The students of Askham, your generation will be taking people to Mars and it's so exciting. I wonder what design features your rover is going to have and how it will work. Perhaps think about what other robotic equipment you'd need to design to farm on Mars. My name's Glenn. Thank you so much for joining in. Please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more videos.